Hey, what's up guys? I'm back once again. Welcome to my channel and I want to say welcome once again to another subscriber. I have 55 subscribers now, so welcome to my channel and I hope you I hope you like uh, what you hear, uh, you know, with the stories that I read from David Pilatus' book, which by the way, I got another one of his books, A Sobering Coincidence. I've been waiting on this one because this one has a little bit more um, it has a little bit more mystery in the in the cases and in the stories, you know, where people just you know they go off somewhere and they and then they, they never found ever again or whatever, or their body is found somewhere miles away. But anyway, uh, just want to say also that today is officially my birthday, December fourth. Uh, it started, of course, at midnight. I was at a friend's house last night. She threw me a birthday party, and I had the best time ever. It was just me, my friends. It was a small gathering, but we all had fun. You know, we were drinking, dancing. It was just all loads of fun. I mean, I had a blast. So this is definitely, for me, this is definitely a 41st birthday to remember. So I want to thank all my friends who came out, you know, for my birthday to celebrate it with me. You know, I'm pretty sure most of them aren't even on YouTube for all I know, but I'm saying it anyway because the airwaves are alive and who knows, they may even hear it. Maybe not, I don't know. But anyway, like I said, I got this book here, A Sobering Coincidence, and I was so excited about it because I was waiting to read some of the stories in this book because I've heard of some of the stories from the book and they are creepy, very creepy. So, without further ado... To my new subscriber, welcome once again. I'm going to get started with a case and a story about a man named Willie Jigba. This is an African American man, which is very, is some, is uncommon in most of these stories because they only find with so many black men in this that fit all of the um, criteria that was established by David and his team. Okay. Like I said, his name is Willie Jigba. It's J-I-G-B-A. Jigba. He went missing on 01-15-11. That's January 15, 2011. Of course, y'all know you already know that. Um, okay, it was around, it was uh, early in the a.m. in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, he was at the age of 24 when he vanished. Um... Uh, Willie Jigba is one of the rare cases of a black man disappearing under the criteria that they established. Like I said, David and his team. Uh, some articles have stated that Willie was a former ASU student. This is not true. He was, he was raised in San Jose, California and graduated from Leland High School in 2005. Now, in 2009, he made his way to the Tempe area <clears throat> and took a job. He was about to start a new job uh, in January of 2011 in, at the Kona Grill. Uh, he was a big San Francisco Giants and 49ers fan. Okay, on to the next page. Give me a second here. All right. Now, on January 14, 2011, Willie went to went with his went with friends to a party at the Sotelo Apartments in Tempe. Uh, that's Sotelo. Oh, yeah, Sotelo Apartments in Tempe. Uh, in the early morning hours the following day, police responded to the apartment complex and broke up the party. At about this time, Willie's cell phone died. He didn't have money for a cab he, and couldn't find a ride home to the Gateway Apartments, approximately one and a half miles away. A uh, friend said it. Friend said that they lost sight of, uh, they lost track of him, and thought he thought he had walked home. Uh, friends and family attempted to contact Willie over the following two days without getting a response. He was reported as a missing person. Yes, the police focused on uh, the Tempe Town Lake and searched it, and searched it without finding him. On, now, on January 26th through the uh, through the 28th, several divers researched the lake and broke it into team broke it into grit uh, patterns. Uh, they found a body on January 28th, 
just outside the search area floating on the surface. The body was Willie's. Uh, now a preliminary, uh, now a penum, eh, tongue tied. A preliminary autopsy, uh, the the preliminary. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, preliminary autopsy results stated that that he probably died by drowning, but uh, they were waiting for the toxicology results. Uh, I could never find the toxicology results. I could also never find the final de determination on the cause of death from the Maricopa County Coroner's Office. And that's a tongue twister. Okay, now with this case, it's like just like all the other ones that I've heard about when David was being interviewed on uh, uh, Coast to Coast AM. Now this is like uh, a typical situation you got a young man of 24 um he was trying to find a job now he they said also that he, i think they said that he went to a school in tempe arizona um okay now let's see it just said that oh yeah he graduated from Leland high school so he was probably on his way to college but he went to leland high school uh, Leland High School, it might be Leland something high school. Uh, one second here. Oh, yeah, 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 Leland High School in, in San Jose. So, he wasn't even a college kid, he was a high school kid. Now, most of the cases in the stories dealing with people that disappear, especially young people, it's always college students and they always seem to be coming from a bar right before they, they vanish without a trace. In his case, he was at a party. Which is somewhat the same because, you know, you're out there with a lot of people, you know, at a certain place and you're drinking, you, you, you're having fun, whatever. Was he drinking? I don't know. He didn't, he didn't say that in the story. But he was coming from a party. He could, you know, his phone had died, which is another key point in a lot of these cases. Whenever There's always a phone involved and the phone is always about to die or it already is dead. So, so nobody is able to contact the person. You know, at any time. Uh, of course, and obviously he didn't have any money to get home by way of a cab, so he had to walk home. Now, this same thing happened with the case of Henry McCabe, but it's but with him, he was coming from a bar, which is also another key point in a lot of the criteria in a lot of these cases, where they always end up coming from a bar. You know, uh, now with uh, Henry McCabe, he was coming from a bar, he was drunk, so he decided to walk home. Okay, but somewhere between point A and point B, which would be his home, uh, which is actually my, like thousands of miles away from his wife, because his wife is still in California. She was probably looking to get a transfer to be there with him, but you know, no such you know luck. But anyway, uh, he ends up disappearing somewhere between point A and point B, and he was found dead in a creek bed. With uh, now, they didn't mention the condition of the body as far as. Was he wearing clothes? Was he just wearing underwear with nothing else on? Who knows? They just said he found his body uh, in a creek bed. Now, the strange part about his story was, like I said in my last video about him, uh, the voicemail indicated that he was being tortured by something or someone or both. Uh, because you could hear him moaning in pain and groaning as well. But in the midst of that recording you also heard this strange growl that was coming from some type of creature that is unknown to any animal expert on this planet uh they don't know what it could have been could it have been an upright animal type dog creature could it have been bigfoot who knows but that growl had to come from something and it definitely wasn't a, a, a human trying to growl and make it sound weird it definitely came from some type of creature that that, that that none of the animal experts are even aware of. So I'm thinking that this creature had come from some other realm of reality, you know, through a portal somewhere. And was able to inflict pain on this man without even laying one paw on him. Because think about it, he's moaning and groaning in pain. Like as if some, something or somebody is torturing him. Now, in the background, after you heard that growl, you heard a man say, stop it. But they never played that part for some reason. I don't know why would you play all the rest of the parts, but you wouldn't play the part 
where you hear a man saying, stop it. It's not like we're going to figure out that it had something to do with this case. I mean, we didn't see the person. We only heard the person. So whether we could figure out, okay, this person obviously killed him. But if that's the case, what was that growl? Who, you know, what? Why was there a growl in the uh, in the, uh, in the in the voicemail? None of this makes any sense. Now, getting back to the guy in the story, which of course his name is uh, I, gotta hear, I gotta read his name again. Ah, Willie Jigba. In the case of Willie Jigba, this guy was coming from a party that he went to with a couple of friends. Now, you would think that if you got some really good friends, they're supposed to keep an eye on They're supposed to make sure that they know exactly where you are. So if, you're gonna, if you came there with them, obviously you're going to leave with them. But for some reason, he didn't. His phone was dead. He had no money to catch the cab. Because obviously he was going to leave early. The other guys were probably going to stay, stay behind and have, have some more fun. But most parties nowadays last until like 8 o'clock in the morning. Or sometimes, you know, whatever. You know, but he leaves in the midst of the party and he walks home so somewhere between point a and point b he disappears and he's found on the 28th of january in a lake they didn't say he was face down or face up or half naked they just said they found him in the river now think about it all the other deaths especially of men young men they either found on in or near a body of water, whether it be a creek bed, a lake, or a river. Never an ocean, thank goodness, because that's too much. You'd never be able to find that body. He was in the ocean unless he floated to shore. But uh, with that, that was pretty much the only um, evidence they've gotten from all of that. They couldn't find the toxicology reports. They couldn't find the autopsy reports for some reason. So... The one thing I've noticed about a lot of these cases, and when the uh, coroner's office are, are involved, well, uh, let alone the police, when they realize that the evidence is so profound, yet very, 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 very strange, they always seem to hide the autopsy report. They don't want to. They don't want to release that to anybody because it's too weird. They don't want nobody to think that they can they, they can't figure it out. But I mean, like, okay, you're human. It doesn't mean that, you know, you have to figure it out. I mean, I mean I'm pretty sure you feel like you have to figure it out because you want to find out what happened to him. But if the evidence is too strange for you to even fathom what happened to this guy, and especially if there's no evidence to say what happened to him, naturally you're going to be this way. That's, it's, a human, or it's a human mistake. I mean, you don't know what happened. I mean, we're not going to, you know, look at you any different. Yeah, we want to find out what happened to our loved ones and our children or whoever else but if you can't figure it out i mean you can't figure it out i mean i'm not gonna look at you any less i would like to know what happened so i would probably get a second opinion from someone else that would be my course of action that's what i would do but you know if they can't find it somebody else can hopefully but if they don't want to give you the autopsy report or if they don't want to give you the uh toxicology report naturally you're going to start thinking that obviously they do know what happened to the person, but they don't want to say it because it's too weird. They don't want to be like, okay, this happened to him, but it's too weird for us to even say because nobody's going to believe it. And I'm pretty sure the newspapers are not going to print, print it. Just like what happened with um, the um, Dennis Martin family. When they found out about this thing that was carrying something on its shoulder somewhere in a line of trees up on a hill, they didn't want to print that because that's too close to the paranormal or too close to the weird like Bigfoot or whatever the case may be. I mean, an irreputable news uh, company does not want to print stuff like that because that will damage the integrity of the company, I guess. They want to be known for real news, not like tabloid stuff like you know my son is was fathered by bigfoot or some crap like that that's the kind of you know attitude they probably took upon that but still if you got information about my loved one or my child or my wife or sister whoever else i want to know i don't care how creepy it may sound i don't care how weird the evidence may be i don't care i want to know if you tell me that my child or whoever was killed in such a way that they were never touched okay still but that lets me know that something happened to my child 
What? I don't know. If you don't have the answer, that's perfectly fine. That should lead that just leads me to think that something weird is going on. Not the fact that a man or a woman or any human period killed my child or my loved one or whoever else. Okay? There is no sign of any type of human you know in any of the evidence. Okay? Nowhere in the evidence says that a human did this because it's too unorthodox. It is too well put together. When you're dealing with a serial killer, this is what they do. They kidnap the person. They hold them for a while and they kill them because they don't want nobody to talk. They don't want to be found out. So they keep doing the same thing. They create a pattern day in and day out for years until they're finally caught. You know, because they, they slip up. They're getting old. They're getting slack. They get, they, you know, they're getting old. But the whole point is no human is going to be that thorough. And I mean, 100% every single time, this has been going on for decades where they can't seem to find the evidence of what's doing it. They can, the, the evidence shows what they did, meaning they killed them, but the evidence don't show how they killed them. Just like a body that's found face down in the creek bed. Why is it that every single person that's found is always either face down, is always face down? That's mainly the men. Face down, half naked, in a creek bed. Which sounds a lot like, a lot like some ancient Hawaiian folklore. Where you have to bury your head in the sand when you see night markers coming. And you have to take off your clothes and crawl around like an animal and smell like one. Because you could not look the king in the eye. And the night markers have that same type of respect. You cannot look them in the eye or they will kill you. Okay? You know? And they'll leave you marked for dead. So when you find people that are face down, you know, in a creek bed somewhere, and they're half naked. But there's no sign of death on their body like there's no puncture wounds. There's no bullet holes, there's no stab wounds, there's no needle pricks in the arm. Nothing to say that they were injected by something or they, whatever. None of that is ever found. They just find a dead body like as if someone took their life force or someone sucked their soul out of their body or drained their energy to the point where they didn't have enough to, to fight to stay alive so they just died. Or you got some type of creature that can use its mind to torture you from the inside out. But by them doing that, I don't know how is it they're doing it, but they're creating some type of pain in their body on the inside, which is making them moan like the hand in the cave. But and then after they finally die from the trauma, the trauma of the pain, there's no evidence left behind to indicate that they were tortured. You just know that the person was in pain, like as if you're getting a stomach ache that is so unbearable that you can't help but scream or clutch your, your stomach and just like oh, I can't, oh you know just stuff like that there's never any evidence of that you just got this lifeless corpse lying on the ground and that alone scares me because nobody can figure out why this is happening but you know that's my theory on all of this i still have more theories that get even crazier and crazier so if you want to stick around to find out come back to my page you know hit me with a thumbs up subscribe below okay right there you see that see the little thumbs up and thumbs down on this side and you got to subscribe next to it tap on that hit me up watch the video you know leave me a comment below as well if you got some theories on what's happened to these people i want to know about it if you let me know i will post it on my next video so you'll get so that everybody can have a broader aspect of what's going on here in this crazy world of mysteriousness okay this is not anything that can be can be thought about in uh, in a logical sense. Nothing about this is logical. It's all illogical. Okay? And it's all part of the paranormal. That's the only way I can put this. Okay? If no one, if we got 411 unsolved cases, it will never be solved by using logical thinking. You know? It just can't. But anyway, I gotta go. I gotta finish celebrating my birthday. So, aloha, mahalo, and a hui hu. Happy birthday to me. 41, baby. Yeah. Peace. Ha, ha, ha.